Hey everybody. So today I want to talk about one of the modifiers you can apply to a text plus node that allows you to style each character independently of one another. And this is really based on a request from a user named Diesel and Iron that put a comment in uh, one of my other videos um, that asked to go through some of the different uh, modifiers you can apply to a text plus. So let's take a look at, uh, at one of those specifically. So I started off here with a new fusion composition and all I'm going to do is bring in a text plus node. I'm not even going to bother hooking it up to the media out. This is pretty simple for, for this tutorial. So I'll just drag it up into our viewer here. And under style text, I'm just going to type big string of text. Down here are all our standard text controls. I'm not going to go through all these. I'll just make the size a little bit bigger, perhaps. So one of the things you can do in the viewer is you can just sort of drag over a, a number of characters and it'll sort of select those characters. So that kind of implies that you could kind of come in here to color or something and change it to blue or something. And it would just change those particular uh, characters. But that's not the case. It changes everything. So all the options that you see here and all down in here in the inspector, anything you see under tools basically is going to be global and affect everything. It's the modifiers here that we want to work with. So I'm just going to do an undo. And how do we apply one of these modifiers? Right now you'll notice it's grayed out. I can't do anything. So I come down here under style text and I'm just going to right click in here. And down in this section here, there's a number of modifiers that I can apply. I've, got, I've done a tutorial on this follower modifier. I'll link that above now. I've talked about some of these other ones in, in some of my other tutorials, but maybe I'll break them out into, into, into single ones as well. What we're looking for today though is this character level styling. So let's just select that. And you'll notice now modifiers is clickable. So I'm going to click on that and it'll bring up this modifier here, character level styling one is what it created. And then it'll have, and it'll, and it will have a number of these controls. So once you figure this part out, everything else is pretty much straightforward. Everything kind of behaves the same way as, as if you were modifying just any, any chunk of text or any string of text. It's really the tricky part here is really just, is really just understanding you have to go to that modifiers tab to be able to, to modify a particular part of a string. So let's just come over here back to our viewer. I'm just going to select the word big here and I can just take the size and I can increase that. And you see now it only affects this here. I can come down to our transform and I can bring the spacing in a little bit. I can come over here and I can change the color perhaps to a to this yellow here. I can also come up to this element panel here. And again, the purpose of this tutorial is not to go through all these different options here. These are all the same options that would apply for your normal text plus if you weren't using character level styling. But still, they, they, they all kind of carry over. So if I wanted to add, add an outline, for example, I would come down to select element two. I would click on enable. I would come down to this outline here. And then you see white is selected here. So you see the white outline. I can change that thickness, change the color a little bit, whatever it might be. So it really is as simple as that. One thing I do want to point out though, it, is, is that these modifiers are stacked on top of any global changes that you would do when you have tools selected. So for example, if I were to click, click on tools and I were to come down to color now and I were to change this color to this red color, it's going to change all the text to red, but on top of that, it's going to apply the character level spacing modifier, the changes from the modifier. So that's good to know. It offers quite a bit of control. So I can make these local changes to whatever I want to really look at here when I'm on the modifiers tab, but I can come back to tools if I want to make any global changes. Now a couple little bonus tips that uh, I kind of covered in my kerning tutorial. I can come up to these controls over here and I can click on manual kerning, allow manual kerning. And then you'll see these little green dots kind of show up. And by, by looking at those, I can kind of click on those and I can kind of drag things around as I see fit. So that's just another way to get some extra control. So that's it for today, a very brief tutorial. I just wanted to go over this because it's not particularly difficult, but if you don't really know sort of the trick to go into the modifiers, it can be a little bit uh, tough to figure out. So hope that helps and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.